Hey guys, welcome you all in this new video, today we are going to talk about Blaze add-on, as you all know that this add-on creates a cinematic fire shader, so, let's start now. I am going to begin with scratch. So that, even beginners can understand what's going on, so let's start by adding a circle, and fill the circle by pressing F key on your keyboard. Then, using quick effects we will simply generate a domain for our smoke object. The domain object we get is a bit small so, I will rescale it and reposition it so that fire does not go out of the domain. We will be making a fire simulation, so, change the flow type to fire plus smoke. For now, we will leave it there and move on to domain settings. Resolution to 64. Time scale to 0.8. A side note, time scale just slows down the speed of simulation. Check the dissolve and set the dissolve time to 25 frames. Also check adaptive domain and I will leave this at default, but if you want you can add some resolution. Reaction speed to 0.45, for now, and smoke to 1.5. Now, let's see the look of fire. OK, change the value of vorticity to 1. Check high resolution, and for divisions make it 2 divisions. And now let me name my circle to fire object. So, now it's turn to tweak some fire object settings. At frame 15, I will put a keyframe for surface a value of 1.5 by pressing I key on keyboard while cursor over this slider. Next keyframe on frame 22, change the value of surface to 0 and hit I. Next, change flame rate to 3 and on frame 25 insert a key on flame rate, by pressing I key while cursor on the slider value. And on the frame 26 that is next frame change the flame rate to 0 and again insert a keyframe. Turn up the sampling subsurface to some higher values like 5 to 10. I preferred 6. It's time to add blaze shader to this simulation, so it's very easy to add this shader just click on add shader button and it's done. Cache was not baked till now, so I reloaded these frames. There is nothing like right or wrong here. Just try experimenting these values and take some more time adjusting these values, and this will definitely improve your results. Here, I shifted some keyframes so that flames do not keep emitted for too long. As I can see there is negligible amount of smoke, so I change the reaction speed to 0.5. Still the smoke amount is not sufficient so I will add one more smoke emitter to this simulation. And now, let me change the resolution for now so that I can play this in viewport. Let me rename this smoke emitter circle to avoid confusion. As you can notice, I have still not added any smoke modifier to this newly added circle, so I will do this now. Set the flow type to smoke, this time. Instead of following me, I would like to recommend you to try and experiment your own simulation setup, and this may help you to learn more about these settings. I am just doing a simple fire simulation and not very advanced, so if you just want to learn about Blaze add-on then you can skip forward. So, coming back to the simulation. I don't want a lot of smoke just starts releasing right from beginning so I keyframed the smoke emission. At frame 10 set the surface value to 0. At frame 10, I will set a keyframe for the surface slider at 0, and after few frames, let's say on frame 15 I will set another keyframe at the value of 1.5 for the surface slider. Now, it's time to understand shader for this simulation. I don't think it is too tough, it is very easy, but don't mind I will explain it in a second. 
As you can see, this shader has 13 different color presets and 11 different value inputs to tweak, by default they are pretty okay, but still, let's discuss about these sliders and what happens when we adjust these sliders. So first of all we will talk about smoke brightness and smoke contrast. Actually these inputs are relative to each other, and what you are doing here by sliding these values is you are adjusting the brightness and contrast of density attribute, these two sliders directly affect density attribute. And density attribute helps in generating most of the smoke, so, mostly these sliders will affect the amount of smoke, rather I would like to say it will manage the ratio between flames and smoke. Smoke intensity will also do this same but in different manner, actually in case of smoke intensity, density is multiplied with color attribute and what that does, is it also reduces the smoke, but do it in the better way than smoke brightness and smoke contrast inputs do, so if you are thinking of reducing the smoke amount then I would recommend smoke intensity as this would do a good job compared to brightness and contrast. As I think, in Blender if you are using brightness contrast node with volumetrics, it do not work as expected, actually it pixelates out volumetrics in some cases, so I hope this node may improve in future updates but here it is not working that good, so in upcoming update, I am going to replace it with some other node setup. Till then, you can use these first two sliders limited, and to avoid that extremely ugly pixelated look, I have set the maximum and minimum limits for these sliders, so if you are just sliding these sliders it should work fine but if you putting the values manually, then you need to be careful of the relative values of smoke brightness and smoke contrast inputs. Instead, you can also turn both these values to zero. And now, let's talk about fire brightness and fire contrast inputs. Actually, these inputs are also related to an attribute, and in this case, it is flame attribute. So tweaking these values, you are adjusting the brightness and contrast values of flame attribute, and, in this case the brightness contrast node worked fine, so here, you can change these values relative to each other. These sliders are awesome for you to use. Changing these values gives a major look difference in fire, one thing I would like to recall is the look of fire also depends on these simulation settings. So, with fire brightness contrast inputs, you modify the brightness and contrast of flame attribute, and that contributes a lot in look of fire, experimenting with these values by yourself will give you more knowledge in a few minutes. And now, talking about fire intensity, as its name specifies, this increases the intensity of fire, that means yellowness of fire in case of real fire or you can say glow, or emission strength of fire. I have set maximum value for fire intensity to 150 but, in some cases you may need even higher values, because lower values makes fire dull and look becomes non-realistic, so, to visualize more heat you can increase fire intensity and, in case of EV even more higher values than 150 are permissible. And now talking about impotence, as the word explains itself, this slider manages power of fire, actually, impotence is opposite of power, so, here if you increase impotence, that means you are reducing the strength of fire. So it's very easy, nothing to understand more about this, just remember increasing this value will make your fire more dark and dull, and reducing values will make your fire more bright. Custom color fire is what it looks like. It shows the color of fire set here, when custom color output is connected. Coming to next, it's burner flame intensity, it's very simple, this input works particularly with burner flame preset only. This will handle the complete look of that preset with this single slider, but still all other sliders can be used to achieve desirable results. Burner flame intensity input can adjust the intensity of fire, so if your fire is looking too dull or too bright you can adjust this slider so that it looks more believable. Coming to next, only smoke density, and only smoke strength, these inputs are too easy to understand, but still, let me explain you both of these, as these inputs were added with version 1.1 of this add-on. So with these new inputs this add-on becomes more useful, as with this feature you can also control the thickness of the smoke, and also if you want that smoke should be more bright or, like this, you can do that with only smoke strength input. So, till now, we have discussed all the inputs this node have talking of outputs as you can see it has 13 outputs, and there is nothing to explain about them, just plug them in volume output of material output node, and the results will be there in front of you. But still, I would like to discuss one or two presets. So one of those, about which I will be talking is Real Flames preset that came new with the version 1.1 of this add-on. This preset is added because the existing presets were lacking with the type of small detail that is needed in campfire-like scenes, and with this preset it fulfills all type of requirements. This preset is specially made for flames where extra detail is required and that looks somewhat different than explosions type of fires. And I believe this add-on covers complete shaders for your fire smoke. So if you are making scenes with smoke or fire in it, then it's no worry for shaders and also no worries for realism. I think this add-on does this job perfectly. Now, there might be a question in your mind that, what if I want to change the color of smoke? No problem you can easily do that. How? So, let me show you. Repeating same process, adding a circle and then using quick effects we have generated a smoke simulation setup quickly. 
and then just add the shader by clicking that add shader button. And now, here carefully, just select the circle that is flow object, not domain, and in the flow settings change the smoke color, as there should be no confusion because the smoke color option is present in two places, one in domain settings under flame and another in flow settings. And here you go. Changing color here will do your work. But remember one thing, whenever you change smoke color here, you need to reload the frames, and even if your cache is baked, then also you need to rebake the frames, and another thing I would like to tell you that you can even animate these colors. And now talking about role of this shader here. This shader has color attribute node which automatically detects the color value feeded here, and accordingly change it in render. The change you can bring in smoke using this shader, is density of smoke and strength of smoke's emission value, and by this way what I want to say is if you want your smoke to be more thin or more thick, you can just tweak the last two sliders. Talking of smoke density, this slider will alter the thickness of smoke, so, to control the thickness of smoke, go for, only smoke density slider. I have already spoken about these sliders a couple of minutes ago. So, I think it is very clear to you, although, I have explained it earlier, but finally talking about smoke strength slider, this slider will increase the brightness or glow of smoke, so, to get bright misty smoke you can increase the strength of smoke. So, I think you understood all, but if you still have any query, you can just contact us via our email, our website, Twitter or our Facebook page. There are many ways to contact us. You can also comment it down below, and I will try to respond you as soon as I can. So this was all about this add-on and I think this add-on lives up to expectations in field of pyro simulations, and it has potential of creating eye-catching results and great looking fire in Blender and that also within few clicks without taking a lot of headache and with good looking results. Because all the nodes including color ramp were set up accordingly, keeping the cinematic look in mind. This add-on has one more plus point and that is it is very cost effective and not so expensive. Thanks for watching and if you have not purchased it till now, the link is in description, go check it now, and wait, before leaving don't forget to hit like, comment, share and subscribe, and also press the bell icon so whenever we release a new video you do not miss any of them.